Welcome back to the Reinhardt's Rundown. In our previous video, we introduced the drug interaction series, and we're expanding today on drug-food interactions. Remember, some drug-food interactions are done intentionally, and we'll get to those soon, but today we'll be discussing unintentional drug-food interactions. Let's dig in a little bit. Now we can't talk about drug-food interactions without discussing warfarin. Warfarin, or brand name Coumadin or Jantavin, is an oral anticoagulant. As part of the body's natural clotting cascade, we need vitamin K. Vitamin K is critical for the carboxylation of clotting factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. This means the more vitamin K you have, the more clotting that occurs, and the less vitamin K you have, the less clotting that occurs. Warfarin works as a vitamin K antagonist. If you have less vitamin K, you have reduced coagulant activity of factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Reduced coagulant activity, you have reduced clotting, and boom, warfarin has now done its job as an anticoagulant. So if we are on warfarin and we suddenly ingest foods that contain high amounts of vitamin K, we then antagonize the effects of warfarin and stop the anticoagulant from working. If we stop the anticoagulant from working, this leads to a clotting event. Foods high in vitamin K include things like broccoli, kale, spinach, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, collard greens, all those delicious green things that we know and love. There are a few other unexpected foods that have a fair amount of vitamin K in them. An example is tea, black tea, or even green tea. Now all of those things are pretty good for us, so does it mean that our patient cannot eat all those delicious green foods? No, they absolutely can and probably should be eating those things. The key here is consistency of diet. You don't want to go weeks without eating a single vegetable and then suddenly start pounding cans of spinach every day. It's better to have a consistent and regular green leafy vegetable intake throughout the entire week. Herbals and supplements can also interact with blood thinners or anticoagulants and may increase the risk of bleeding. We think about the five G's here. The five G's, garlic, ginseng, ginger, ginkgo, and glucosamine, along with vitamin E, primrose oil, high doses of fish oils, all of these things can increase the risk of bleeding. Willow bark even, which contains plant salicylates, can increase bleeding risk as well. Keep in mind when we increase or decrease vitamin K intake, we see a change in the lab value or the INR, which is how we monitor warfarin therapy. But with these herbals and supplements, we may not see that change in INR. And so we have to remember that the increased bleeding risk is still present, despite it not being evident on the lab value. That's the Reinhardt's Rundown. A grapefruit juice review is coming soon. Make sure you subscribe to our mailing list for our next update.